Hello everyone, we are going to demonstrate the examination of the cardiovascular system. First, we should wash our hands, go to the right side of the patient, introduce ourselves to the patient, explain to the patient of what we are about to do. After getting the patient's consent, then proceed with the examination. Come into inspection of the patient, observe the general appearance of the patient. Then, recline the patient at 45 degree angle. Examine the patient thoroughly from head to toe. Inspect the face for xanthalesma. Look for pallor in lower palpebral conjunctiva and for icterus in upper palpebral conjunctiva. Check for central cyanosis on the lips and mucous membrane. And inspect the mouth for signs of poor dental hygiene. Inspect the hands for clubbing, splinter hemorrhages, and nicotine staining. For clubbing to elicit shamrod signed, place the dorsal surfaces of opposite terminal phalanges together and check for obliteration of the diamond shape. To examine pedal edema, apply digital pressure for at least 10 to 15 seconds over a bony prominence like the lower end of the tibia or the lateral malleolus. And we can also check for sacral edema in case of bedridden patient. Arterial pulse examination is done using the three finger method. Index finger is the obliterating finger and is kept proximal to the heart. Middle finger is the palpating finger and judges all the parameters of the pulse. Ring finger is the emptying finger and is kept distally from the heart. Palpate the radial artery against the lower end of the radius bone by keeping the patient's hand in semi-prenated position. Palpate both the radial arteries simultaneously to check for radio-radial delay. Palpate the radial artery and femoral artery below the mid-inguinal point on the same side for radiofemoral delay. To elicit water hammer pulse, elevate the patient's arm above the heart and palpate the patient's forearm with the examiner's palm for tapping impulse. Examination of the peripheral pulses. Right carotid artery is palpated using left thumb. And left carotid artery is palpated using right thumb. Brachial artery is palpated against the lower end of the humerus. Or just medial to the biceps tendon. Posterior tibial artery is palpated behind the medial malleolus. The dorsalis pedis artery is palpated lateral to the extensor hallucis longus tendon. Measurement of blood pressure. The manometer should be at the same level of the cuff on the patient's arm and the examiner's eye. The air back within the cuff should extend for at least two-thirds of the arm length and the circumference. The mid portion of the rubber back within the cuff should lie over the brachial artery. Now palpate the radial pulse as the cuff is inflated to a pressure of 20 mm of mercury above the level at which radial pulsation can no longer be felt.
place the cetoscope lightly over the brachial artery and reduce the pressure in the cuff at the rate of 2 to 3 mm of mercury per second until the first chorot cough sounds are heard which corresponds to the systolic blood pressure. As the pressure is lowered further, the fifth chorot cough phase, that is disappearance of the sound, corresponds to the diastolic blood pressure. Measurement of jugular venous pressure. With the patient at 45 degree angle and face slightly turned to the left side, place one scale perpendicular to the sternal angle. Check for right internal jugular vein pulsations between the two heads of sternocleidomastoid muscle. Tracing upwards, identify the highest point of pulsation and measure the vertical distance between this point and the sternal angle using another scale. To elicit abdominal jugular reflux, apply firm compression in the periumbilical area for 30 seconds to look for JVP rise. In normal individuals, JVP rises transiently by less than 3 cm and falls down even when pressure is continued. But in patients with heart failure, the JVP remains elevated. Coming to inspection. Inspect the carotids, position of the trachea and the thyroid gland. Now, inspect the chest for chest wall shape and symmetry, any chest wall deformities. Look for precordial bulge. Check for dilated veins, scars and sinuses. Then, look for apical impulse and any other visible pulsations over suprasternal area, supraclavicular area, parasternal area, epigastric, pulmonary, aortic and interscapular pulsations at the back. Palpation of the anterior chest wall. The fingertips are used for pulsations, base of the fingers for thrills, and base of the hand for heaves. Apical impulse is the lowermost and outermost point of definite cardiac impulse with the maximum perpendicular thrust to the palpating finger. The normal site is in the left fifth intercostal space, one centimeter medial to the midclavicular line. Palpate the apical impulse with hand. Locate the apical impulse with the finger. Character of the apical impulse is best studied in the left lateral position. Parasternal heave is the anterior movement of lower left parasternal area. To examine for parasternal heave, place the base of the hand over left parasternal area and check for any movement. The other methods of palpation of parasternal heat. With heel of the hand in cocked position applied over 3rd, 4th, 5th intercostal space in left sternal margin. Or by placing the ulna border of the hand. Check for palpable heart sounds and thrills in the aortic area, pulmonary area, apical area and any other palpable suprasternal or epigastric pulsations. Now check for carotid thrill on both the sides. To check for direction of flow in case of dilated veins, choose a segment of vein of 3 cm that is free from branches. Two fingers are pressed close together and moved in opposite direction to empty the vein. One of the fingers is released and speed of filling in one direction is observed. The procedure is repeated in the other direction.
Surface marking of the heart. Identify the sternal angle 5 cm below the suprasternal notch, which corresponds to the second costal cartilage. Mark the first point on the left second costal cartilage. Second point on the upper part of the right third costal cartilage. Third point on the upper part of the right sixth costal cartilage. And fourth point on the apex of the heart. By joining all these four points, we will get the surface marking. Now coming to percussion. Percuss from above downward in mid clavicular line up to the liver dullness. Now go one space above the liver dullness. Change the direction of the percussing finger parallel to the heart border and move medially till you get dullness due to the right heart border. Percussion for left heart border from mid axillary line and start percussing medially with percussing finger parallel to the apparent heart border. Before going into auscultation, an ideal stethoscope should have well-fitting earpieces, thick long tube of 25cm length and diameter of 0.325cm. Diaphragm diameter should be of 4cm and bell diameter of 2.5cm. The bell of the stethoscope is used to auscultate low-pitched sounds and murmurs like S3, S4 and mid-diastolic murmur. The diaphragm of the stethoscope is used to auscultate high-pitched sounds and murmurs like S1, S2, clicks, opening snap, systolic murmurs and early diastolic murmurs. Areas of auscultation Aortic area is in the second right intercostal space adjacent to the sternum. Pulmonary area is in the left second intercostal space adjacent to the sternum. Tricuspid area is in the left fourth intercostal space adjacent to the sternum. Mitral area is in the left 5th intercostal space along the midclavicular line. Herbs area is in the left 3rd intercostal space adjacent to the sternum. Gibson's area is in the left 1st intercostal space adjacent to the sternum. Routine auscultation of the heart. Auscultate at the apex with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Reposition the patient on the left side. Listen with the diaphragm of the stethoscope and then with the bell of the stethoscope. Return the patient to the original position, reclining at 45 degree angle. Auscultate with the diaphragm at the lower left sternal edge. Auscultate with the diaphragm at upper left sternal edge. Auscultate with the diaphragm at upper right sternal edge. Sit the patient forward. Auscultate with the diaphragm at lower left sternal edge in health expiration. Auscultate over the carotid arteries for any radiation of murmur or any carotid artery brewery.
auscultate first heart sound in the mitral area. Palpate the carotid artery while listening to the first heart sound. S1 coincides with carotid upstroke. Auscultation for mitral stenosis. Patient in left lateral position and breath held in expiration. Auscultate using bell of the stethoscope in mitral area. Time the murmur with the carotid. Auscultation of axilla for radiation of pansystolic murmur of mitral regurgitation. Auscultation of tricuspid area. Patient in supine position and breath held in inspiration. Auscultate using the diaphragm of the stethoscope. The murmur increases on hepatic compression. Or passive leg raise. Auscultation of aortic area. Patient in sitting up and leaning forward position and breath health and expiration. Auscultate using diaphragm of the stethoscope. And time the murmur with the carotid. Auscultate carotid artery for conduction of murmur of aortic stenosis and carotid brewery. Auscultate epigastrium for radiation of pansystolic murmur of tricuspid regurgitation. Auscultate Rogers area that is left foot intercostal space for murmur of ventricular septal defect. Auscultate supraclavicular areas for subclavian artery brewery in case of aortoarthritis. Auscultate femoral artery for durosis murmur of aortic regurgitation. Auscultate interscapular area for coarctation of aorta and aneurysm of descending aorta. Method of elicitation of cervical venous hum. Auscultate the root of the neck on the right side with the bell of the stethoscope with patient in standing or sitting position. A continuous murmur will be heard which is known as Pontens murmur which indicates chronic compensated severe anemia.
Valsalva maneuver. Ask the patient to take a deep breath and blow air against closed nostrils and closed mouth. Most murmurs decrease in length and intensity except systolic murmur of HOCM becomes louder and murmurs of mitral valve prolapse becomes louder and longer. In standing position, most murmurs diminish except HOCM and mitral valve prolapse which become louder. In squatting position, most murmurs become louder except in HOCM and mitral valve prolapse. Tracheal tug or Oliver's sign. Raise the chin of the patient and apply upward pressure on two sides of the cricoid cartilage. Downward pull, which is felt with each heartbeat, is considered as positive test. The assessment of the cardiovascular system should be concluded with the examination of the abdomen for any organomegaly. An examination of the respiratory system. Thank mm -hmm. you.